Hello everybody, this is Skip Allen, a Corel Painter Master Elite, and I'm going to do a uh, tutorial on two new thick paint brushes in Corel Painter 2019. One of them is called Gra Grainy Thick and Wet, and the other is called Grainy Smooth Blender. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to see is we've got this uh, image up, and if I click on the layers panel, you'll see that I have a blank canvas, a paper layer, and then a thick paint layer above the paper layer. And the reason I have the thick paint above is because thick paint is going to cover up some of the grain of um, uh, the canvas or paper. So that's why, I, that's why I have it that way. The other thing about this particular image that has been changed is I came up to Canvas, Surface Lighting, and I changed the shadow strength of the thick paint to 2%. I keep it at either 1% or 2%. The default is 10 and I think that's too much, so I reduce it to 2%. Okay? Now, let's see. We've got the grainy, thick, and wet brush selected. And the next thing we want to do is open up the um, mixer pad. Now, here I have the mixer pad. And let me make that a little wider. I have the mixer pad open. And the reason I'm using uh, a mixer pad that has an image on it is because Thick paint can sample multiple colors. Down here in your icons, you have the option to sample color or sample multiple colors. And the colors that you sample, if you're using this little um, dropper tool, the width of that sample is determined by this slider. So right now it's set up at 50 pixels, but it could be 28 or whatever you want. But I'm going to go on back to fix 50 pixels. Now I take the sample multiple color and I come up here and find a spot where we have multiple colors somewhere. And I think I'm going to, um, i tell you what, let me move this around a little bit and see if I see anything that's a little bit more exciting. Well, let's try, let's try this blue and gray area right here. So I'll just click right there in the blue area. And then as I paint, oops, that's not giving me much. Yeah, there you go. You see the two colors, the, the blue and the sort of red. That's the beauty of these um, thick paint is that, you, that it works just like regular paintbrush. You can load one end of it or one corner with one color and another corner with a different color. Okay, now you can begin to see that as I paint, if I paint very, very lightly, I'm going to get a streaky kind of textured brush and it's going to show the paper grain. If I paint heavily, it's going to be thick and it will cover up the grain. And as I lighten my stroke, it will begin to give me that uh, loose, uh, bristly edge at the end. And I think that's really pretty. So you can get, you can go from something that's very thin and hardly covering the surface, almost dry, to something that is quite thick just by pressure. Okay. Now, another thing to think about is when you are doing this, if you have a thick piece of, you know, a lot of paint on the canvas and you're working lightly with a th light pressure. Now this is, these brushes are very sensitive to, pressure, sensitive to pressure. If you're doing just a light pressure and you come across some of that wet paint, you're going to drag that wet paint out and you will get more uh, paint than you were getting before. Okay.
Now, it is extremely sensitive to paper texture. If I click on this cloned paper, let's open up the paper panel. I've got it. I'll tell you what, let's take it back to its original. All right, that's 100, 150. That's the default settings for any paper. And I'm going to increase the size of it. I'm going to increase the concentration. And now when I paint with the brush, look at the difference. How, how much different the texture looks just because we changed the paper. And that's very, very important to remember. Now I'm going to switch over to the color set and I'm going to grab a bright yellow and I'll put that over the top. Now notice that as I paint into it, the yellow is going to be dominant, but it does tend to blend a little bit into the color. If I can get that green. You see the green is going to be dominant, but it will kind of blend into the color somewhat. Now that brings us to the second brush, which is called Grainy Smooth Blender. And this is a blender in the sense that it will not add paint, okay? But it's it has um, it will read grain, the paper grain, and it will blend the color. See? So this is going to smooth out your strokes, blend your color together, and it can, you know, drag the paint into some of the surrounding area. So if I go back to grainy thick and we grab like a red, put it in there. Uh, and let's do a little lighter area there. Go back to grainy smooth. And as you can see, if you pull from the red into the green, you're going to get red dominant. If you pull from the orange into the red, you're going to get orange dominant. Okay, so you can determine what's going to be the dominant color by the way you, uh, the direction you use to uh, move the paint into the next grouping or next paint. All right, let's see if we can do something with this image. I'm going to get rid of that. And I'm going to open up an image that I had been working on before with another tutorial where I was working with uh, dab stencil brushes. Uh, and I worked out this little quick blocked landscape. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take my grainy thick brush and I'm going to find some sort of color that I want to work with. And it's going to be this kind of uh, lavender, gray lavender. I'm going to bring it up so it's a little bit lighter in color. And my brush size, I'm going to make that come down a bit in size. And I'm going to use the nappy paper right now because I don't want too much texture back here. And I'm just going to put in some of this color over here in this background, those mountains that were back there. I'm going to find a kind of green. I think that green might do. Let's see. But I want to make it lighter and grayer. And uh, at this point, I'm going to put in my horizontal chaos paper. And I want to take it back to its original setting. And I think I'm going to leave it at that and see what happens. And I want to put in that pretty green color. Just get some green in, back in the back of those mountains. And you can see I've got some texture happening in it now. OK, 
Okay, I think that's pretty good. Now I'm going to switch to the grainy uh, smooth blender. And I'm going to smooth this up slightly. I'm actually going to let it really get smooth. Now I've got too much pointy stuff on the edge, so I'm going to go back to the nappy paper. I'm going to go back to my thick grain and I'm going to stay with my green for the moment and just put it up here over the edge. Like that. And I will sample this purple because I don't remember what color that was. And I'll put a little of that in place here. And I'm leaving some of that white in the back. And then I'm going to go back to the smooth. And because we've got that smoother paper, it's not going to be quite as rough as it was. There we go. We've got sort of a mountain going back there. Now I'm going to go to a, I think I'm going to go to this gray gold green that we have right here. And let's make that gray green. And we'll take the brush again. Uh, I want to go back to the grainy thick brush. And I want to make that brush a little bit smaller. And I don't have uh, any of the strong paper going, but I'm going to try going to that cloned paper. Now that, that is a custom paper of mine. This is an ideal time to uh, really work with making papers uh, and, and seeing how, how they affect or how they can, can affect these brushes and give you some really beautiful color. I mean textures. Okay, yeah, I want that to be kind of falling back with that sort of green-brown color. Uh, I need a little bit lighter there, and I want to make it grayer. So we'll bring it lighter and grayer. And we'll put a little of that just to kind of give us a little brightness in the distance. Just like that. And I'm going to, again, take my grainy smooth. And I want to make that smaller. I'm going to smooth some of it up, but not all of it. You know, uh, let some of it stay kind of thick. And that will tend to drop those colors together back there and let it fall back a little better. Okay, so that's kind of what I want to have happen there. Now what I'm going to do is add a new thick paint layer. One of the things about thick paint is that it always stays wet. So it's hard to put texture over a wet area unless you go to a new paint, a new uh, layer, and that's like working over a dry layer of thick paint. Okay, so in this case, I'm going to go to a kind of red-brown. Let's try something like that. Uh, go back to my thick and thin, make it a little bit bigger. And I think I'm going to go to the chaos paper, horizontal chaos. And I'm going to make the size of it larger. 
and a little bit stronger with contrast. And let's see what that does. Well, not a lot, doesn't seem like, but it's probably because we've got, uh, you know, it depends on where the paper is here and whether or not it's actually uh, going over some of those lines. Now, I want this, I'm going to go darker with this. That was a little bright. So I'm going to come right over the top of that with this darker brown. Because remember, it's going to bleed some. And I'm going to make the brush smaller. And I'm going to put just a touch of that off in the distance. Just like that, just to give it a little bit of uh, a dark spot over there. Now I want to brighten this up. Let's take some of this bright yellow, uh, orange rather. <laughs> And uh, I'm going to go to the other paper and look at it. Let's make it larger and very contrasty. Yeah, look, now we're getting some of that texture. Okay, and I want even brighter, like maybe some of this yellow in here. So let's see what that does. Yeah, just a little bit of yellow will go a long way. But you can see what's beginning to happen here. We're beginning to uh, add a little more believability to the landscape. And we're adding thick paint to something that was not very thick. I'm going to come in again and smooth out some of this, not all of it. See, just giving a little bit of it touch of smoothness. And if I press hard, I begin to get that kind of um, textured uh, edges that you can get there and begin to develop the, the look of uh, the image. Okay, so what this has done is giving you an idea of how to work with those thick paint brushes. Um, I first started with the digital, um, not digital, I started with the dab stencil brushes to create the background and then started adding in uh, thick paint. I might want to then go to another type of brush like maybe this thick and thin pen and I might want to grab some of that a uh, really dark color again and come in and just kind of mess up the edges, maybe give it a little line or something here that would tend to give us some vertical uh, foliage type looks in, in certain areas, which would tend to, um, you know, just it begins to make the uh, image pop a little bit more. Uh, we could even use some of the brighter colors up here in the front and, you know, begin to um, define certain areas. Let's make the brush a little bit bigger. And I'm going to go darker. Come on, there we go. So there you go. You have an idea of how you can begin to take these brushes, and build a blocked landscape and keep adding to it 
until you finally get the landscape that you want. This would not be a finished landscape, but you can see how it's uh, moving along to, to something that would be uh, finished. All right, I hope you enjoyed the, the uh, tutorial and you got something out of it. Thank you very much, and I will talk to you next time. Bye-bye. Thank you.